Welcome to the Victorian Parent Council VPC Parent Podcast Series. VPC is a registered charity organisation dedicated to everyone who support parents in educating their children. I'm Jackie Vanderbilt, your host today. Good evening and welcome to our very first VPC Live. Uh, So uh, this is a bit of an experiment, so if we get it wrong, Um, with the controls and so forth, bear with us. Um, And we're both just uh, discussing that we've had quite an interesting and long day. So so anything can and will and might happen, but uh, we'll, we'll of course, be extremely professional. So this is um, a bit of a treat, really, because uh, Amanda and I had a chat at the beginning of the year about starting... (laughs) <laughs> starting starting strong at the beginning of the year and uh, I think we've both started our uh, our, our years of, with some of our blogs and some of our writing with with uh, 2020 wow <laughs> so I should pretty much introduce myself I'm Jackie Vandervelt um, education consultant and I do a fair bit of uh, work and, and consultation work with the Victorian Parents Council and I'm going to hand over to the lovely Amanda Lacorde to say hello and introduce herself Hi, thanks, Jackie. Yes, Amanda Lacorde, and I'm an academic life coach with organising students based in Melbourne, but work with students across the country these days, uh, primarily from Year 6 through to Year 12, and, and also with schools and, and, um, and parents as well. Lovely. So, Amanda, let's start this brave new world of learning from home. And, uh, and as I said to you the other day, I don't often have a whole lot of um, praise for the Victorian government, but I, I actually kind of do this time around <laughs> because they've actually said, here's the plan, here's what we're going to stick to, this is it. Um, I'm not sure where they're at at the moment, but I think this the decision to learn from home, brave one, but also too, I think, important in terms of getting some sort of stability for a plan for the rest of, t- at least for term two. But I think it's really important for us to start to clarify some of the terminology um, so in particular, what, you know, we're saying homeschooling, learning from home, they really are quite different, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. And it's one of the things that I, you'll, you'll see me whenever I comment or put anything on social media or what have you, I will not use the term homeschooling. And, and for me, I think there's a real big difference. And I think that that sets the mindset up, I think, as well. And I know the media and everyone else are using the term homeschooling, I think, because it is generic. But you know, basically for me, learning at home is really about kids still learning just like they would be at school with their current curriculum and their teachers, but via technology. That's really what learning at home remote learning is. Whereas, you know, homeschooling is really the parent's responsibility for the child's education with no involvement with the school whatsoever. So I think it's really important to distinguish that and really when it comes to, to home, um, to learning at home, parents need to be parents. They're not the teacher. And really, at the end of the day, and you and I have had this conversation quite a few times, that it's just about trying the best and, and doing the best they can. And I think that that's a good, that's a really good distinction to make first up. And I think that you know certainly homeschoolers that they are registered, they go through a registration process. Um, they are. Um, absolutely, you know, developing a curriculum that is um, of their own choosing, whereas this, this um, it, to a certain extent, um, but the, the, uh, the learning from home is all about uh, following the direction from school with the material that is being provided by school, using the mechanisms um, that they've made available for, um, you know, for that communication. So I think now let's have a look at what, what do we think is the new normal? <laughs> well, I think, I think, Jackie, it's different for, for most schools. And, and in, in the work that I do with students, I'm hearing lots of different ways this is actually working. And, you know, for the majority of kids, um, you know, a fair chunk of them are still following timetables. Some of them are sort of left to their own devices. Um, and there's a real mixture of, of, of ways that schools are doing this. And, uh, I think it's really important, I think, for parents just to really understand how their school's, you know, working and I guess, you know, to, to give, uh, and that's what we're obviously talking about tonight, to give parents some, some tools and strategies around how it's working. But 
I think the, the one thing is let's try and change the mindset. You know, there's no point focusing on what happened at school and how it works at school and, and those sorts of things. But, you know, open our minds up to, you know, the, this, this new platform, um, whether it be easy or not, and I appreciate for lots of parents it isn't, uh, and for students, it, it, you know, a lot of the students I'm speaking to, it's taking quite a bit of time to, to get used to as well. Sure. And I think that's a nice little segue then into talking about mindset. Um, you and I have talked a lot about this, so I'm interested. I'll, I'll let you run with it first because I've got some, I probably come at it from a slightly different angle. <laughs> well, I think, you know, again, I talk about it too, you know, mindset's very important to a student's learning. And one of the biggest things, is, obviously we want children to have a, a growth mindset rather than a fixed mindset and be adaptive and, and open to change and open to learning and, and rather than, you know, it's too hard, I can't do it and, you know, some of those negative connotations. But one of the biggest things, the biggest predictor of a child's mindset is their parents' mindset about failure, which I, you know, I just think is, is amazing. And one of the things that I guess I tell parents to, to focus on in particular is focus on the process rather than the outcome. So, you know, this is how it assists children with their with their learning and and obviously you know in, in hopefully achieving the marks we want them to get but you know rather than focus on grades accomplishment intelligence ability you know let's focus on the learning the effort the work ethic the improvement those sorts of things look I, and I, I really like that and I think that one of the, the, the I suppose the bit that I will add will be really around what do parents more can parents bring to this and and we're very much as parents we're models for our children so that if we are, you know, demonstrating and culture, you know, nurturing a culture and an optimistic mindset, um, what does that mean and what does that look like? And I think that the very first thing is that what it isn't, it isn't rose-coloured glasses. So um, I think that this situation is tough. I mean, there's there's no two ways about it. I think some families and will go through this, will sail through this period of learning from home and. I'm sure it'll be different, but they'll come out of it, you know, well. Uh, others are clearly going to struggle uh, for a whole variety of reasons. And that's not because they're, uh, they're lacking in parenting skills or anything like that. It's just, it, it is, it's tough. Um, so how we, how we think, how we, um, how we act, how we view, etc., is really going to determine our mindset. And uh, I think that... You know, I think the, the important thing here for me is to remember other tough times that you've been through um, as a family or as a parent and how did you get through those. So think about those, those, those and what was it that uh, helped you get through those tough times um, so that you can then draw on those strengths again uh, in, in, this, in this particular time. But also too, I think it's to, um, to be adapt to being to optimism in a, in a certain sense is to view this situation as a temporary situation i think there'll be things that will be certainly will be changed you know after this uh, and i hope they change too i'm i'm, I'm actually looking at this as, as quite an opportunity to be perfectly honest but i think there's a it's certainly temporary um and it's very specific too so it's not like you know, while it might be touching on different parts or lots of different parts of our lives, it's a very specific incident. And there's lots that we can learn from this particular time. I think you're right, Jackie. I think, you know, it's about being adaptive. And, and, and that's a great skill for anyone to have, um, you know, and adapt to the situation. And, and I appreciate that we have to keep changing at times to, to, to continue with whatever's happening at the time. And, you know, whether it be going back to school, you know, part-time or whether it be going back to school, you know, just year 12s to start with or one day a week like what's happening in New South Wales, you know, we're going to have to all be adaptive as to how that happens. But one thing I guess I want to highlight in particular is the fact that this is unknown for everybody. This is not something that anyone really has the answers to. And, you know, the government, the schools, the teachers, parents, students, you know, we're all navigating this for the very first time. And one of the things that I'm very big on in particular is thanking teachers in particular, because I think the amount of work and effort that they have put in to get our kids still learning and learning from home. And obviously, you know, we're both parents and, and we, can, we can attest to that from a parent point of view, as well as, you know, what we do in our, in our um, businesses. But 
I think, you know, the main thing is we all need to work together and be supportive of one another through this journey. You're right. And that really speaks to the point about agency as well, is that, you know, parents can make a difference um, in this situation. So, you know, that's, that's also part of that optimistic outlook. I think that's an incredibly important, you know, role for parents is to have that optimistic mindset because it will uh, be passed on to their children. So what challenges are, I'll ask you first, Amanda, what challenges are you seeing or hearing about from um, the students and families you're working with? Well, it's very, it's very interesting because, to be honest, I'm hearing more positives than I am actually challenges. Now, there's definitely challenges by all means. You know, and I think most kids, you know, the fact they're getting used to the process, they're getting used to the amount of work. Some are finding a lot more work than perhaps they had um, when they're at school. Now, that is a challenge and that is a challenge that I'm encouraging students to speak to their teachers about. Um, some of them are saying to me they reckon they're getting more work than they were when they were at, you know, when they're in the school and the classroom. So it's important. Be, and, and I've had communication with some teachers around that today um, as well. And I think they can't gauge that, you know, it is harder for them to gauge, you know, how much work to give students. So that's where it's really important for parents to, I guess, work with their children to, to speak to their, their teachers and encourage them, you know, to do so. Likewise, to be honest, I've actually been in touch with the school because I feel one of my children actually needs more work. So I've gone the other way um, and, you know, he's, he's racing through it and I don't know if that's, you know, I can't gauge that either. So I've been in touch with the school about that and they've been, you know, again, I, I cannot thank them highly enough. I think they're just so communicative and, uh, and helpful. But in terms of some of the other challenges, you know, I've been dealing with a lot of year 12s, obviously, and they're probably the biggest group that I feel for at this time. You know, there's a lot of social change, a lot of, you know, they're missing out on the lasts of their athletics carnivals and their swimming carnivals and their, you know, all sorts of different activities. And, and that's tough. Um, but, you know, motivation is probably one of the, the big things that a lot of those kids are struggling with. And I guess until we get outcomes as to what's happening around their assessment, that, that is a little bit tough. But having said that, I, I don't think they'll be, you know, put out to dry. I think they will be well looked after. They're all in the same boat. And, again, whatever will be will be um, around that. Um, and then, you know, as I said, most of them are positive because, really, a lot of kids are saying to me that they're, they're more focused, there's not the distractions of what happens in the class, you know, they get through the, the teacher can communicate the work better, then they can get their work done, you know, quicker. Um you know, a lot of them are loving the fact they don't have to get up. They can get up literally just before they have to get online. You know, they don't have to wear school uniforms. So there's, there's a whole lot of those sorts of things coming out, which, you know, is good to see. It is good to see. And I think that, that what one, you know, little anecdote from my world is we were all, you know, trying to support the local cafe still. Um, and uh, so you go down and collect your mail and get your coffee and we're all standing, you know, two metres apart. And, the, and there's a a batch of dads you know down, <laughs> down the group of dads have all brought their kids out to um, have a bit of a morning tea break and, and get get coffee and mail and a few essentials from the local shop and it's been really interesting um, the coffee queue conversation where um, we've finished all of them and mainly primary okay so these are mainly primary students we've finished all of our work by lunchtime the school work we've finished the school day and that's just a really, and again, what are you doing with them? So there's that challenge where, you know, there's some real struggles going on with, you know, parents feeling that they've got to get through every single piece of this work. And, and they don't. And perhaps some guidance, some more guidance from teachers. And so I think your, your comments about feeding back to the school and saying, you know, help here, what, what, what's essential and what isn't. I think that's an important point. But uh, also, too, we're racing through this. Um, well, we seem to be going, getting through everything really quickly. Is that okay? Um, and then and then the questions are arising. What are they doing the rest of the time at school if we're getting through this now? But you're right, the dynamic is such that they don't have the distractions. And there's a whole lot of other stuff that goes on at school too that, uh, you know, that takes up the day. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's just been really interesting. I think that there'll be that, um, that flow on of, okay, some adjustments about what's essential and what isn't essential and 
what can what do you really need to concentrate on and and what can you you know if it, what is optional in the sense that if we're all a bit tired and fractious you can let that little piece go that's not a not a big deal Jackie one of the one of the other challenges that I've just thought of which is probably one of the most significant ones is depending on how schools are functioning so for the majority or not majority a, a fair chunk of my students I guess um, are operating to a normal school timetable and I think that's fantastic um, you know their teachers might be involved at the start of the lesson they might be involved the whole lesson they might come in at the start and the end whatever but students have got a structure and a routine and a plan and I think that's really important where some of my other students you know they're given work at the start of the week they're sort of you know checking in with the teachers a little bit but they're pretty well left to their own devices now I think it's really important that these kids have some sort of routine and structure that they have a roadmap to follow because otherwise it becomes really hard and I think even for families like you were saying you know these primary school kids it's still important for families to have some form of routine and structure in place and and to let kids know you know sort of the timetable and and bits and pieces as well because we we all generally work much better under that sort of structure that's so true and uh, for people who are listening tonight amanda and i have both written um different sort of different blogs and pieces in the last couple of weeks about exactly this and uh, so we will be uh publishing a, an ebook together uh, to to go along with the recording of this webinar or this this um, VPC live, um, so that you can see what our thinking is around that in terms of some recommendations. So that you'll find that quite useful. Um, I think another thing too, another challenge that I'm hearing about is um, you know the uh, sharing of uh, technology resources at home, uh, which so we've got you know maybe one, maybe two or more children who all need to be on devices. We've got mum and dad and possibly older, you know, some older children who might be at university or also working, all at home juggling the whole IT situation. And sometimes there's not devices for everybody. So there needs to be some sort of sharing of the devices around, around the, the family. That's a big issue that, you know, I think we've all got to um, wrestle with. But I, I, one of the things that was suggested to me was to actually go back to the school and say, well, here's our family timetable. Here's what I'm dealing with at home in terms of how we have to share our resources. Uh, so I, I just need you to be aware of that <laughs> so that there's not that unrealistic expectation. Yeah, and again, pick in, you know, talk to them about what are the key things. You know, I had a student tonight who's on the spectrum. She's got lots of learning challenges and it's a real struggle for her and her mother to sit there and do these online classes. And, you know, while she's online, she's fine. But the minute she gets off, there's massive meltdowns and there's lots going on. And, you know, my advice to her today was to talk to the school uh, and find out which ones of those lessons are more priority so that, you know, we can focus in on those for now and, and perhaps ease off on the other. So, you know, it is, it's all about adjustment and doing what works for you and your family and your situation. Exactly. And not everything is online. So there should be, you know, pretty good, a pretty good amount of uh, activity and, and learning that, that's occurring that does not require screen time as well. So, um, you know, that's something that we've, we've spoken about at length over over, over several conversations before, but actually making sure that there is that time and that break. So talking now about parent roles and teacher roles, because I think we, we sort of alluded to it at the beginning, but I think it's actually important now to sort of talk about who does what. Yeah, well, I think, you know, the schools are obviously setting the tasks. They're setting the, the work. Um, now, there's, there's a whole lot of different, you know, aspects and, and things that go on here. And, I mean, if I'm talking about probably secondary school kids just for a moment, uh, you know, this is all happening. We don't know sometimes as parents if this is actually happening. So, you know, my children sit in separate rooms to where I'm sitting. My husband sits in another room. We're presuming they're online. We're presuming they're doing what they're doing. So, again, it's important to communicate, you know, and schools to communicate that, you know, to parents. Um, I've got some students that are struggling to, to get online all the time as well. So it's trying to, you know, find out, um, you know, 
the schools that are trying to keep in touch and keep those kids engaged. And the most important message that I, you know, I think is really important is that kids are just still engaged with their school and, and school community and learning more than necessarily actually doing the work as such right this moment. That's right. And I think, you know, parents, parents are parents, teachers are teachers. You know, and I think that, you know, you're still, you've still got to, as parents, you've still got to keep relationships intact as well. Number one, definitely. <laughs> so, you know, beyond this, you're still going to be mum and dad. Uh, so it's important to, you know, to be, to continue to be mum and dad and not take the role of the teacher from that point of view. And I'd sort of liken it to parents being a, being a coach. So coaches coach, they don't play the game. They know the game. They may have played the game in the past, but they're not actually Good. playing the game now. So they are the, they're the ones bringing all of their experience to supporting, you know, the, the team players. So I think that's a, that's a nice analogy just to remember that to, to breathe. There are other people doing this as well, um, but it's important to remain mum and dad because... Those, that relationship with your children is far too important. Yeah, that's what I say as well. It, it's number one and it goes on beyond this. It's going to go, you know, you want it to go on for a lot longer. But I think the the other thing that's that's really important is to, you know, recognise we're all going to have good days, we're all going to have bad days. And I mean, even doing what I do and working with students, you know, I've had some challenges with, you know, a couple of, you know, a couple of times with my children and, you know, again, I, I just communicated with the school about it because, I was at a loss to, to what, what can I get my child to do? And as I said, I've got all the tools and strategies and, you know, I know everything in that sense and, and work with lots of students on this. But again, they listen to me because I'm not their parent, whereas I am a parent in this situation and I have to, you know, pick, pick the battles and, and so forth as well. So, you know, keep you, keep you in touch with the school. Uh, and, you know, another parent even rang me the other day and said that she, you know, she had a, their day just went haywire and they didn't get all the tasks done and so forth. And I said, this is a primary school student. And, and I said, that's okay. Like, don't worry about it. Like, it's not going to be crucial to their learning. If you don't get through everything every day that the, that the teachers have assigned, no one's going to look back in, you know, 10, 15 years time that they missed, you know, a couple of lessons here and there. That's right. And, and you know, and, and, and in a regular day at school, that would happen as well. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, having having been you and I having both been teachers at some point, um, we we know we know there are good days and there are certainly days where not a lot happens. You know, not a lot can happen as well, depending on what's going on. So, Amanda, the unknowns. What don't we know? We don't know what we don't know, but what don't we know now? <laughs> well, I guess there's a lot we don't know, and you know, for me at the moment, I think you know we just have to trust our government that you know that they're doing the right thing. I think. The, the challenge and what I, as you said, you, you said you liked, you know, the Victorian government at the moment with what they're doing with schools. I think, I personally think it's good too, because the last thing we want is all our kids to go back to school in two weeks time. And then finally have to pull them all home again in, you know, another week after that. So I think, you know, that's a hard one to juggle and no one knows the answers to this. We don't, we still don't even quite know what's going on with this COVID-19, you know, and, and how it's manifesting and where it's manifesting and, and what we can do. So I think there's a lot of unknowns still and we just have to, you know, do the best that we can. I, I look, I, I agree. You know, we, you know, it's, it's all, it's all still very fluid. Um, but what we, what I think is really interesting in this is that, that we've already done the working, the, the learning from home. So if we have to come back to this at some point, we've already got a roadmap map yeah. how this is going to work. So I think there's a lot of capability and competence has been developed, which, is, um, which has been useful. So we know that it won't be forever. It'll be different. I don't think we're ever going to see something. I don't think we're going to go back to the way it was. Yeah. I think some people wishing that we, that we could, but I'm not certain that we're going to be necessarily doing that um, anytime soon. Yeah, and so I'm not necessarily sure that we'd want to entirely. I think there are going to be some really interesting changes. Yeah, I think that the key message around that is to keep, for parents in particular, is to keep talking to their children and, and highlighting the fact that this won't be forever, that, you know, they will go back to school at some point in time. Uh, you know, as I said, who knows when that might be, but that, that is the message. Now, I know I've got some students who will really struggle with that. 
you know, they're actually loving this learning at home, particularly some of those kids who have learning difficulties and, and challenges. So, you know, already we are talk, continuing to make sure we do talk, definitely talk to them about that and that, you know, they'll be okay about going back to school and, and some of those things. So I think that is a really important message um, to, to get out there. Now, you know, again, some might not. And some might have to look at distance ed and, and other, you know, and other options or, or schools, as you said before, you know, maybe schools, you know, might open up the way they do things um, a little bit differently. So, but again, they're all unknowns too. So we don't know, do we? Exactly right. So I think people are probably finding at this point that they've got a little bit of extra time in the day or that their children appear to be racing through the work or perhaps not as engaged with the work and they seem to be sort of at loose ends a little bit. So what sort of suggestions have, have you come up with that would be still learning and probably stimulating the brain and keeping things in a more formal, educative sense, but are still things that can be done from home? Well, I think there's a lot about still developing, you know, kids' independence. And, and helping out in the home. You know, one of the questions I often ask students when I first meet them is what do you do, you know, in terms of helping out at home? What chores do you do? And, and it amazes me sometimes how some kids don't do very much at all. So I think right from a young age, you know, it doesn't matter what age these kids are, you know, they can be helping out, you know, obviously age appropriate, but helping out around the home. So I know even my, you know, my children, you know, last week I was very busy and I got to the point where I was trying to cook dinner and I had students and I had, um, I had something else on that evening and there was lots going on. And it's like, come on, guys, you've got to help out here. I cannot, you know, manage all of this. But the one message, I guess, around, you know, if we, we help getting our kids to help out, if they don't know how to do something, show them how to do it. Do it or, you know, show them how to do it. Do it with them. And then watch, step back and let, watch them do it. So we're giving them the scaffolding along the way to be able to, to do these things ultimately by themselves. And these are things that are going to help them, you know, in years to come, you know, knowing how to cook, knowing how to clean. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, and, and well, we, we've had conversations before about, you know, I think I said, you know, we're not raising children, we're raising adults. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of skill that, that needs to be passed on that really parents are the only ones who can really do that effectively so um, yeah but I think there's other things to it it doesn't have to be all chore based you know what I mean there's there's lots of fun things as you know there's you know we they can be cooking you know learning things like that you know I'm encouraging mine to get out every day doing some form of exercise which I think is going to be hard in the next couple of days because the weather's going to be a bit challenging but you know um, and the other one is you know keeping in touch with their mates I think is so important and and whilst as parents we're struggling a lot of us are struggling with that because it's technology based primarily you know gaming social media and those things I think we still have to have our our routines and and our guidance in place around that but we probably need to relax it a little bit at the moment as well yeah, exactly. And not everything needs to be Netflix, although can I just say I think I've binged myself significantly over, over the last couple of weeks. There's stuff that I thought, oh, I can't remember I ever saw this movie and I've been watching, you know, catching up on all of that. But also too, it's a great opportunity for wider reading too. There's, there, there are time, this is a good time now for that. And I, I remember... Um, you know, at the time my, my kids were going through, my children were going through school and there were quite challenging novels and things that they were reading. But there was, um, there were, but there were audio books. So mm -hmm. they could actually have the audio book listening to that and following the text at the same time. And that can be a really, if you've got a, a, a you know, a young person who is a bit challenged with reading sometimes, not necessarily they're not readers, but they just find those larger, text a little bit difficult that they're that's actually a good way of getting through them as well yeah one of my students actually talked exactly about that I asked her what she did in the holidays and did she read her novel that she was meant to be reading and she said exactly that she got the audio book and she had the book in front of her and yes she read it <laughs> and that's and that's great any you know any way to get you through I'm I'm all for it so well-being i think this is probably the big I and mean, our schools are very concerned about it and have been coming up with amazing ways of checking in with children but in a lot of ways i mean parents really are the the guardians at home for this sort of thing so some well-being tips from your point of view 
One of the things that I think, you know, as parents, and I, again, I talk about this sometimes in, in, in my workshops, is that don't just assume everything's okay. You know, you don't hear anything. You, you know, and we, didn't, we tend to as parents. We tend to assume, oh, there's nothing, no one's saying anything, we're fine. I think it's still very important to check in with your kids, um, you know, on this journey. And, again, not hassle them. That's not what I'm saying. But just check in and just perhaps ask a couple of questions and, you know, are you okay? And, and what's, you know, what's working for you at the moment? What's not working for you? And, and, and don't put words in their mouth, but just, just check in from time to time and not just assume I agree. And I think two parents need to be watching their own well-being at this time because I think that there's certainly, you know, stresses and strains on uh, their role. <laughs> Plus they probably, you know, they may have lost work too, you know. Yep, definitely. They have lost work. Um, you know, they've been stood down or, or, you know, no longer not earning as much if everyone's had to take a bit of a haircut. Uh, and uh, and also too, if you are working from home, you're juggling all of the you know the school, the work, the um, everything else that go, that goes on in a home. Um, so parent well-being is actually really critical at this point too. And I think that we probably need to reassess what it is that we do to boost our well-being because a lot of it, a lot of what we do for well-being is outside of the home normally, and now that's not as available to us. So if we were exercising you know you know with gym classes or exercise classes that had a bit of a social um you know social element to it as well that's no longer no longer happening Although i'm actually very lucky there jackie that my gym has gone online and i'm set up in my living room and we still have the banter with live sessions so but that's not the norm i get that <laughs> <laughs> no, I did see a funny meme yesterday that said 87%, 87% of gym members don't realise that their gym is actually closed. So, <laughs> which is probably, just which is probably pretty true. Um, but I think it actually gives us a, um, a really good opportunity to, to have these conversations with our children about what is actually important for wellbeing and for happiness. Yep. One of the things that we know, um, we, we, the way in which our brains make sense of these things is actually reference points. And uh, I was doing a bit of reading on reading about this a couple of weeks back. We make a lot of sense of the world by comparing ourselves with others. Um, and so now we're not out in the world uh, <laughs> to see, you know, who's got what and keeping up with the Joneses. It's actually a really good time to sort of sit back and reflect and, and say, well, you know, again, like we've said, been saying earlier, what is essential? Um, you know, do we need to have all of these things? Are we, you know, can I delay that purchase? Can I delay that, um, you know, that activity and reflect more on relationships because it is actually relationships and, and those experiences that we have with people that actually are going to build our well-being and our happiness significantly. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, the other key thing that's really important is I think obviously getting kids out, you know, still doing some form of walking, running, you know, exercise, particularly those kids who were very active, you know, have had all their sports pulled out from under them. Um, and, and can't do those, you know, in a, in a team sense that they can still, you know, do something to, to feel good and get some fresh air and, again, just get away from those screens. It's, it's really interesting because some of the students that I'm hearing from are saying there's too much screen time, which sometimes you would think as a parent, oh, wow, I've never, I don't think I would ever hear my, you know, child say that. But other parents are saying to me, yeah, their kids are, you know, whilst in the, in the early stages they're probably spending, you know, 24-7 literally on screens over the school holidays and things. But now that they're sort of settling into a routine, you know, I know kids are going back to reading and, and kids are playing board games and, you know, they are looking for other things I think sometimes to do um, around that. I, I don't think our dog's ever been walked quite as much as he can be. <laughs> I agree. He flops on the couch. He sort of he hears the rattle of the lead and goes, "No, no, no, not again, not again." <laughs> but certainly, yeah. Look, I think that ex that exercise is actually really critical for um, you know for our kids and for ourselves as well. But also to just having downtime, it's actually extremely exhausting being together all the time. Yeah. So finding having spaces where people can just go and be on their own for a little bit is actually really important. 
um, and, uh, and and having time, just sort of downtime to process thinking, yep. to process the learning that they might have had during the day is actually really important for well-being as well. Oh, definitely. And I know I'm a morning person and I, you know, I was trying to adjust my, my gym, like the gym sessions aren't early in the morning anymore and they're in the middle of the day and I was trying to do them live and it's like, no, nah, I've gone back to my normal, you know, doing them not live, you know, early day start and, and that's my time, you know, and it always has been my time, you know, I'm up at five, five thirty, and no one's awake at that point. So I still cherish having that time on my own. Um, like you said, uh, away from everyone. I mean, my whole, my whole life's changed in the sense that I worked from home um, and it was just me. Now, my husband was coming to work from home anyway because his office was renovating, so he's now home. And, yeah, as you said, now I've got the children home as well. So that's a completely different routine and structure to what I'm used to and having all, you know, no one else to have to worry about during the day. I know. Oh, there was a queue at the coffee machine today. I was appalled. <laughs> exactly, when you're not used to it. So that, that's, that's a challenge for lots of parents um, as well, you know, oh. trying to juggle all sorts of different things. That's right. Um, let's, um, let's sort of move on now to where to from here. Well, I think, you know, there's something I actually, you know, wrote down and I, I ran a, um, a session similar to this um, about two weeks ago and I worked with a, a lady by the name of Kate Fitzsimmons who's a, a resilience coach. And one of the key messages that she talked about is we'll figure it out. And I really liked that, that terminology. And, and I'm just going to write, read some information about that because I just think it's really key to what we're talking about. Um, we'll figure it out. And these words help to settle the brain when it wants to run away to the potential threats of the future. It helps to focus it back on what it can control and that it isn't whether the problem happens but your ability to overcome it, mm. to solve it, to work around it or through it. So this helps remind your kids that everything is figure-outable, which I thought was a really good, good term. This is the most powerful and reassuring thing you can do for them right now. And I thought... Yeah, we'll figure it out together. We'll, you know, we don't know all the answers. We don't have, um, you know, know exactly what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or in six months' time. But at least, you know, it it it, it gives us something to to work towards. Oh, look, I I agree, and I think one of the um, what, I've got a sort of few points on that as well. Uh, I love that it's figure outable. <laughs> That's awesome, but we're um. I, my advice in this sort of edit time is to slow down. And I know that we're, that's kind of being enforced, but to actually take time to enjoy being slow and appreciate being slow. Yep. When I said that this morning, you know, have my, have my cup of tea early because I'm, I'm up early as well on my own. It was actually the silence was beautiful. You know, it was, it was beautiful. So, but I think too, we're not expected to do as much. I'm not racing around you know, in the car, picking this up, doing that, I've, I've actually slowed right down and it, and it has actually been very good. Mm. So I'm appreciating the slow. Um, so where to from now, from here, I want to be able to harness the slow. That's my, <laughs> and keep that, you know, at, at, at particular times. I think too what's um, important for where to from here is to recall the good times. So there are some good things that have happened to us in the past. There are good things that are happening now, even yeah. in the inter interesting times. They say interesting times, unusual times. I think I, someone made a poem up of all the, the lines of emails that they received and it said unusual times, different times, uncertain times. Um, but think about those things that were really, that where you had good feelings about particular events. So maybe it was the board game. Maybe it was that moment of learning that you shared, that, that, that light bulb moment that you shared with your child where you could actually see that something had, had, had sparked for them, you know, and remember how that felt together and recall that um, is important. I think to expressing gratitude, um, it might only be something small in the day, like that little quiet five minutes on your own, um, but it's something, you know, that you can say thank you for and to be, and also to, to encourage that conversation with your children at yep. this time, there is some good stuff that's coming out of this. 
Um, and I think too, again, you know, resetting comparisons, you know, looking at relationships and what's important in those relationships um, and delaying all of those non-essential purchases, which is kind of easy at the moment because we can't go out and actually look. <laughs> but, <laughs> but delaying gratification and a lot of these things is actually a really useful exercise too. And that would be my where to from here that I would have to be encouraging people to think about. So we're, um, we're coming up to sort of looking at some, some questions, some Q&A. Um, and so I think we sent through, we had some come through in the, uh, in the email, um, in the email from people registering, but whoever's on, if you would like to at this point, um, use the chat function to, uh, to type away uh, any, any questions that you have. And bearing in mind that uh, Amanda and I are experts in Victorian education tonight, but if there is a question that comes up from another from another state, um, I'll, 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 chance a, I'll chance an answer for New South Wales. But uh, if there's anything that does come up that we're not able to answer tonight, we will, um, we will take your questions on board and, uh, and produce an answer in the Q&A um, part of the e-book. So our first question, I'm going to read out the first one and we'll, we'll go from there. Will missing term two have an impact on those children currently in grade six pertaining to the transition to high school? And I guess, you know, this is, this is a key area of where I set my business up in relation to working with students was and is still the focus is between transition from primary to secondary school. So I feel quite, you know, sort of qualified to, to sort of answer that question. And I think not at this stage. You know, I don't think it will impact at this moment if they don't go back to school for term two. Um, where I think it might have an impact is if this drags on and, they, for instance, they didn't go back to school for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Then we have the challenges of, again, the fact that they haven't, um, you know, they haven't finished, you know, something off and then starting a new thing. But to be honest, you know, year six is pretty much usually a holding pattern um, for a lot of kids. A lot of kids get to that point where they are ready to move on. You know, it's a bit like the whole, you know, childcare, you know, move into primary school as well. Um, kids get to a point where, where they're ready and they're, they're more than capable. Um, you know, some schools, you know, obviously are, work with their kids on assisting them, you know, with transition and, and giving them some, some more tools around it. But if they don't get those now, lots of secondary schools are very good at equipping these kids with these tools too. So at this moment, I think, yeah, okay, but let's, you know, if, if it drags on, then, then maybe that's a different story. But, you know, keep in touch because that'll be something that I'm clearly focusing on and, and working on and, and um, we'll be supporting children through that, whatever it may be. And we might um, we might jump back on another VPC live and, and have a discussion about transition. I mean that's an area too that I also work in, and uh, I'd be saying you know that the schools are very well aware of any way of of, of transition mm -hmm. and what makes a successful transition, um, and the way in which they work with families and the students to get them ready to move into high school. Um, this cohort will have you know. Um, their experiences that they had over term two or for however long this goes for woven into um, that transition process. So I don't think it's something that you need to be overly concerned about, um, to be honest, because I do believe that schools do an amazing job with transition generally um, from primary into secondary school. Um, and it is about familiarity, um, making sure that they know the basic things of where to find, you know, their, how to find their way around the school, that type of thing. Um, yeah. In terms of knowledge and content, you know, there might be some some areas that, that need some assistance, um, but, to, but generally speaking, they do it extremely well. So yeah. I wouldn't, I, I would agree with you, Amanda, I don't think it's anything that, need, that people need to be too concerned about at this stage. Um, we had a question. The next question, I think, was from a teacher. The principal wants me to Google meet with groups of students five times in the day. Is this too much? Um, feedback is time consuming. Um, I think I think that was from a teacher. Um, yes. So, look, I, I look. I'm a. I, I work in part of the work I do is in instructional design. I think that probably 
you know, five Google Meets or five video calls replacing like for like classes it was probably okay in the first couple of weeks as, uh, as we were winding down from the end of term one while we were trying to sort out what learning from home would look like uh, from a school perspective. Um, I do think that that is extremely exhausting for everybody, students and, and teachers alike, if you maintain that, um, that you know, replacing <laughs> your classroom experience with an online Google Hangout or a, or a Zoom meeting like we're doing now. Um, you'll find other ways of doing it. And I think that there's certainly some really good advice around uh, the way in which you can organise your, your um, instructional design that actually makes the most of the sorts of things you can only do face to face. Um, you save those for video calls um, and then you set things up so that students can be doing uh, work, you know, facilitated, but, but pretty much, you know, self-directed as well. Um, lots, of, lots of teachers are also doing um, video, you, you know, creating videos and things which can take away from that too, can't it? That's right. And it's still giving that, um, that in, the direct instruction for the students um, and there's very quick and easy ways of doing it. All of the, all of the uh, software that you're using, Google Hangouts and um, Zoom and Teams and whatever else you're using, um, all have the ability for you to make little quick short videos. Even your phone, your mobile phone, you can make them on, on those as well and upload them into whatever learning platform that you've got. But if that person wants to contact us directly, um, again, we're more than happy to give you, give you some, uh, some additional information on that as well. Um, I think the next question was, what is happening with special schools during the pandemic? Have you heard anything, Amanda? Because I did a bit of ringing around today to get ready for this one. Yeah, no, I, I haven't heard anything on that front at all. So I rang, I rang the department and, um, to get some information um, specifically for this question. And, and it wasn't that they weren't helpful. They were. It's just I couldn't get anybody at the time because they were all flat out. <laughs> They're all yeah. flat out being busy. So we will get an answer on that um, for, for that person. Um, but I think what was really useful, though, is a colleague actually did send me some really useful tips from uh, a fellow called Jack, uh, Jake Miller. Jake is a, um, a, a technology integration specialist who works in education. And he came up with a whole lot of uh, resources for um, assisting students with particular types of learning needs. Um, so, you know, things like accessibility, um, the accessibility functions on, on apps, um, which are really, really, um, I, I thought were just awesome. Um, so the, 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 I'll put the link to that article um, from the web on, in, into the ebook as well. But you can look him up. He's called jakemiller.net, Miller with an E. 10 tips for supporting students with special needs in remote learning. Now, he's a, um, I think he's probably from the US if they're talking about remote learning, uh, but talks about very specifically how you can um, improve, um, you know, accessibility features on devices. So, you know, speech to text, screen magnifiers, screen readers, um, just contrasting, um, high contrasting mode so that it inverts colours of the screen and the text, you know, which can be help, uh, probably helpful for a lot of us, actually, mm. not, not just students with, um, with particular learning needs. Um, but also to, you know, the iPads and other, other types of tablets have got all sorts of uh, um, things like predictive text, you know, dictation, feed, typing feedback text replacements that can help look up things for you, um, assistive touch functions and so on, that are all actually part of the devices now. So you don't have to go and get new software for them. They already exist as part of the, um, the native software. So we'll put that link up because I think that's actually a useful thing that parents aren't necessarily aware of. Um, the schools may not even be aware of it. So I think some would be, but um, there's some really neat features there um, that will be really useful, I think, for parents as well. So look, before we before we wrap up, we will have a an ebook um, that we'll be putting up with the recording on the website. And speaking of websites, we have a brand new Victorian Parent Council website. So it's the same URL uh, and. Uh, I think this is probably, I think we were speaking to um, 
to Evelyn, this has been a very long, um, it's been like a very long birth. Uh, so I think she's, she's a proud mama. <laughs> It looks amazing. I, I was on there last night checking it all out, and it really and, does look awesome. And the colours and the vibrancy, and yeah, just a, I just think it's an amazing resource. So incredible. So I think that while we've got the time here tonight, I, I just want to showcase showcase it. So it's coming up on your screen now. So um, yes, Victorian Parents Council brand new website. Uh, with lots and lots of new features. Oh, there we are. We're there. Where we are in the in the feed. Um, lots of features. Lots of information. Really worth going in and having a poke around. Um, a, a, a ra random clicking to to see all of the, the things that um, the Victorian Parent Parents Council has to offer uh, parents across Victoria, parents of school aged children across Victoria. So. Um, you know, the resources in here are fantastic. There's lots and lots of information there um, and the sorts of activities and partnerships that they get involved in as well. So do have a look at that. I think you'll find that extremely useful and worthwhile. Um, also too, um, this is the very first VPC Live. Um, we're going to be, uh, while, while I think um, things are, are, are in this sort of, uh, you know, digital world <laughs> we're, we're making the most of everybody uh, getting on board and using the technology so uh, we're going to be having another one of these next week same time uh, with uh, Martine Oglethorpe uh, Martine is a digital a digital parenting expert yeah she's uh, fantastic so isn't she I'm, I'm actually doing some work with her as well <laughs> Yeah, well, it's great. Well, so we've had good chats with you. I've had good podcast chats with you. I've had good podcast chats with Martine as well. So that's going to be fun. So that's um, learning, living and working or working and living in the, di in the digital world. Um, so that'll be, a, a, that'll be a good conversation to be having as well. But I think at this stage, I think what we might do, um, Amanda, if there's uh, any, any final, just final tips and comments or takeaways hopes, dreams that you'd like to leave people with tonight? Well, as I said, really, I've highlighted throughout our conversation, you know, do the best you can and we will all figure it out together. Yep, we will. We will. And uh, my, my take on this is that it's going to be some really awesome stuff that we learn about each other, that we learn about our own capabilities as parents um, and I think too, you know, uh, I'm welcome to Radical Parent Engagement 101. You're, you're there living it, actually doing it now um, in, a, in a very unique way. And I think there's going to be some wonderful things that you will notice and appreciate about the way in which your children learn and, uh, and notice and appreciate what your teachers, your, your ch uh, children's teachers do as well. So I think on that note, we might say thank you for joining us. Um, it's been great having an, having you here tonight, Amanda. Always good to talk. We always we, we never ran out of things to talk about, do we? No, no. I think we work very well together. <laughs> we do. Um, and thank you to everybody who's live online tonight. Um, it was lovely to have you with us. We hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, look out for the recording and also the e-book that we're going to put up on the website. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you to our guest speaker. We hope you enjoyed today's topic. Want to know more about this podcast and other VPC podcasts? Please visit the VPC website, vicparentscouncil.vic.edu.au and leave a review. We would also welcome you to contact us if you would like to be our guest or if you have a topic around parenting and education. Thank you to Melbourne singer Emma Sydney for her permission to use her soundtrack, Cherish. Until next time, thank you for listening.